Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 10th of April. India's Home Minister Amit Shah visits Arunachal Pradesh amid China border row. Opposition PTI terms Pakistan government's one-year performance as dark period. And Sri Lanka's economy on recovery path, says IMF official amid opposing views. India's Home Minister Amit Shah on Monday visited the country's northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh and launched the Vibrant Villages program in Kibitu, a village along the India-China border. The two-day visit is crucial as it comes days after China renamed 11 places in Arunachal Pradesh, claiming the region as its own territory. India has objected to the claims, saying that the inventive names will not alter the reality. Shah on Monday also inaugurated nine micro hydel projects in the border village. Meanwhile, China's foreign ministry reacting to the visit said that it views Shah's activities in the area as violating Beijing's territorial sovereignty. China and India have had several skirmishes over their border and clashes in mountainous regions in recent years have seriously strained ties. Our purpose is clear. We all want peace. But we will not be able to do this in our country. Our army and our army will not be able to do this with our army. This is our purpose of the government of Narendra Modi. Hospitals across India, both public and private, conducted mock drills on Monday to check the preparedness against the deadly coronavirus amid a significant surge in infections across the country. On the first day of the two-day exercise, dummy patients were brought from ambulances to hospitals following a protocol. The time duration till the patient gets admitted was also recorded. Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia visited the RML hospital in capital New Delhi to inspect the mock drill there. India logged 5,818 new coronavirus cases on Monday, taking the active case load to 35,199. Despite the surge in cases, hospitalization rate has still been low. Doctors have said not following COVID-appropriate behavior and the change in weather have contributed to an ideal environment for viruses to thrive. And after a year since Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan was ousted in a parliamentary vote, his opposition PTI party has issued a white paper and termed the ruling regime days as dark period. The 51-page document accuses PM Shehbaz Sharif's government of human rights violations with details of police operation at Khan's Lahore residence and detentions of supporters. Statistics related to economic destruction and inflation have also been included. Imran Khan, in a video message, lambasted the ruling coalition for downward spiraling the economy. He also threatened to take to streets if re-elections are not held, as per court orders which the government is reluctant to comply. Well, former government employees in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently staged a demonstration to demand the promised hike in their pensions by the Pakistan government. They accused Islamabad of being apathetic towards their plight. Scores of former government employees and pensioners in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently held a protest to demand a 100% increase in their pensions from the Pakistan government. The protesters lamented the soaring inflation has already shaken their domestic budgets, but Islamabad has remained apathetic towards their plight. They said they have been holding demonstrations since last year, but no official has come forward to even hear their pleas. वैसे भी आपका ये फर्ज आए तो होता था कि किसी ने कहा अगर कोई मसला है तो आप उससे पूछ लें कि आपका आप क्या चाहते हैं तो मैं समझता हूँ कि ये भी हमारे साथ जाती है कि शक्ति साहब ने आज तक हमारे साथ मुलाकात नहीं किया है रोज रोज कभी कभी कुछ और लेगा कभी भी डीजल लेगा बिजली लेगी सारा कुछ लेगा तो तनख्वाहें और ये पिछले ये क्यों नहीं बढ़ा रहे हैं गोवत अपने लिए सब कुछ कर लेती है और दूसरों के लिए कुछ नहीं करती the protesters blamed instead of providing any aid to the people in the already backward region, economic losses faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are also being compensated from territories under its illegal control. 
The International Monetary Fund, IMF Senior Mission Chief for Sri Lanka, Peter Brewer, has said the crisis at Island Nation is on a path of economic recovery. In a video presentation shared on YouTube, Brewer said that after years of increasing economic problems and policy mistakes, Sri Lankan authorities have put together reforms to raise government revenue, stabilize prices and build up foreign reserves. It came amid concerns by opposition parties which are blamed that the government has been trying to satisfy the global lender without considering the ground reality. The IMF has approved nearly three billion US dollars bailout to the cash-strapped nation over the next four years. Sri Lanka is expected to kick off a reworking of part of its domestic debt this month, which aims to finalize it by May. And the buzzing sounds of the automatic needles echoed the halls at the International Nepal Tattoo Convention, which saw artists inking intricate designs on body parts of hundreds of enthusiasts. The 10th edition of the event, held over the past weekend, hosted a total of 97 stalls and received an overwhelming response in the country, where tattoos still remain a taboo. It featured a traditional black and grey, as well as the Tibetan motives, amongst others. The convention brought together one of the biggest names from the tattoo world, like Gaile, Yogi, Pepa and Colin Zombro, and Nepali artists, including Binay, Bimal and Sri Kisi, among others. It's still a, like a, I can say like a tab, maybe like not lots of people are like so much familiar and common with the thing, you know. Even when I started, my parents, they were like not so open about the tattoos and everything. And slowly the mindset of people are changing and they are like now more open to it and they are taking it as like a lifestyle now. And thousands of devotees in southern India celebrated the wedding of Hindu god Lord Murgun by pulling a massive chariot in a procession. Take a look. A huge crowd of devotees took part in celebrations of the Panguni festival in India's southern Madurai district to show their devotion to Lord Murgan. The Hindu god of war were pulling a massive chariot in a procession on Sunday. The festival is celebrated every year with great fervour to mark the wedding of Lord Murgan with goddess Devyani. It coincides with the month of Falgun or Chetra as per the Hindu calendar. It is intended to underline the glory of Grahasth Dharma, the married life of a householder. I'm being a teacher, I'm not a teacher. I'm 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 a the festival has six major events that take place over 15 days, the most popular being the symbolic wedding of the gods, followed by the chariot festival. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.